I'm Brendan from SSW TV, and we're here at NDC Sydney 2019. And I'm uh, happy to be joined by Dan Fernandez. Yes. Um, you had a great talk earlier today. Um, we talked Thank with, you. Um, let's start by telling you a bit about yourself. What's your job title? Sure. You work for? Uh, I've been at Microsoft for 18 years. Uh, worked on a number of things within that time, from you know as a developer evangelist in the field, C Sharp, uh, Visual Studio Express, Channel Nine. Uh, Azure SDK, and you know one of the latest projects. I'm now working on the uh, Azure.Microsoft.com team, but uh, before that, I was working on Microsoft Docs and Learn. And how do we kind of reimagine our documentation experience from folks who were familiar with MSCN and TechNet? Yeah, thanks. It was a great talk today. I've never seen someone talk for a full solid hour with so much enthusiasm about <laughs> Docs. So, what are the highlights you can give us um, from that talk in the next uh, couple of minutes? Sure. So, um, I think some of the the key things that we wanted to talk through was. Um, uh, how do we really think about the experience and think about docs almost like an open source project, right? So um, if we think about how we manage code, code is checked in, we do a workflow, we have co a continuous integration to validate it, it goes live, we can, we can obviously check things, we can do rollbacks, there's history, et cetera, et cetera, there's linters while you're writing stuff. We can apply the same things and those techniques to say markdown and images, right? We can verify, hey, you can't have a blank title. Hey, uh, you, you have a broken hyperlink. We can do uh, things as you're typing uh, at linters, and we have a, a docs authoring pack that helps folks for authoring, as well as, hey, how do we validate? We've now just built a 1,000 pages. Are they all valid? Are they all working? And so on and so forth. Or uh, make sure that all images have things like alt tags, right, for accessibility. So when you think about kind of holistically, how do we kind of embrace that? That goes from we're going to use GitHub and use the workflow tools that we're, everybody knows and loves, all the way to, man, I really want that experience of, say, IntelliSense to be able to find uh, any API that Microsoft has ever shipped available on the web, or be able to walk up to a piece of code and go, you know what, let me click it and just try it, and be able to run something, you know, a classic one being like string.format or some of those things where you're like, you always forget exactly how to do the, the formatting. You can run it uh, inline and even connect up to uh, Azure Cloud Shell and even manage your Azure account and your Azure resources directly from the documentation. Awesome. So one thing that stood yes. out from um, your talk was what you called the mother of all migrations. <laughs> yes. There's, there's taking this huge amount of content everywhere. And how do you get buy-in from so many different teams with so many things that they owned and get them to all sort of join into your, your new project? Yes. So uh, while, you know, there's a number of things there uh, on the technical side that we go through, like the using Jamstack, JavaScript API and markups and all the technical stuff, the other part is the human part. So uh, uh, Jennifer Meshkowski or Jenny Meshkowski worked on my team and her team uh, with Sadeep, uh, they called it the mother of all migrations because they had to move 45 million docs uh, and figure out what to do with all of them. And in some cases, uh, Visual Studio was probably one example where they would literally copy paste every single doc. So you're talking 25,000 copies of the same thing between Visual Studio 2008, 10, 12, 13, 15 and then find out what actually changed that's new that you want to make sure to keep, what can you retire, and so on and so forth. So it was, it was a, a, a fun project, to be sure. Fantastic. And um, you've got a bit of a demo for us. Um, what would sure. you like to show us on the screen? OK, so uh, um, I'm going to talk through. Uh, so what you're looking at here is the .NET API browser. So this is a microservice. We're actually um, uh, build a way to scan all of our docs. And we do this using an automated set of tools that converts uh, DLLs or packages in NuGet, uh, that are in NuGet, uh, scans the content, and then allows us to have kind of an IntelliSense experience. And one of the key things is our .NET APIs were everywhere. So now, we also have support. We have all these APIs in one place that you can search. Like, I didn't even know we had this many Dynamics or BizTalk <laughs> libraries that existed. And it's not just this. Like, you click on one of these, and then you can actually see the specific version. So you want to make sure, like, hey, our team's on, you know, .NET Core 2.1. I want to make sure that you have trust in the documentation. It's only going to show you the APIs that actually shipped with that specific version. So uh, let's get into a couple examples. And you know, we'll go .NET Framework 4.8. This will turn all the things. You can do a search for, say, uh, collection, see the concurrent collection, the specialized namespace. Um, 
uh, and so on and so forth. And uh, one of our examples, of course, being, uh, let's say, string dot. And as I type, I kind of got an IntelliSense experience where it's pulling back results in real time. Um, Is it using an index for that, uh, some kind of search engine? Yeah, exactly. So we're actually using Azure Search underneath the covers. So each language, so we did this for all .NET APIs, all Java APIs, all Python, PowerShell, Azure CLI, Swagger, and Quantum. I think I got every one. I'm sure I probably missed one. Um, uh, uh, so that way you basically have that nice experience. And let's just go to maybe, hmm, let's pick uh, yeah, string.format. You can see some of these different examples here. Um, this is using the .NET Triad. So in partnership with the .NET team, this actually lets you walk up to a code sample and it's spinning up a container in my browser that has the right environment for me so I can actually try this. So um, uh, I do need to give it a sec to, to spin up, but what it's gonna allow me to do is basically write code directly in the browser. Um, so while that's cooking, getting going, because we are on, oh, there it is. Okay. Um, uh, we can just play with this and do a couple different things here. So uh, let's do maybe, well, we'll just do a quick append here. Uh, uh, and colon, my content goes here. Uh, and I'll click run and it's actually executing everything that I need to do. So you can take an example, see it, and actually play with it, and be like, okay, so th this is kind of like your unit test, so you don't have to try and integrate it, or uh, the classic one when we talk to customers, they build like a Windows form project or a console one, and people are like have console 99 apps, and it's only because they're trying that one method. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we're trying to save the, those classic examples. So there's a number of examples that, that are basically designed to have this. And uh, another example is our REST API. So Microsoft ships uh, over 20,000 different endpoints. How do you even find out which ones they are? Uh, same capabilities to be able to search. In this case, I'll just do a quick search for, say, um, resource to look at Azure Resource Manager. And there's uh, Azure Resource Management. And if you're using something like Postman, you're probably familiar with this, where I can walk up, I can now sign in to that API, and at that point, I'm actually running commands directly against my Azure account. So uh, in this case, we'll do this. And we're doing a simple list, so that way I don't accidentally delete applications. But you know, it's just doing HTTP uh, gets. You can do things like change the headers, uh, add specific values within here, um, and even kind of a JSON code when I need to do something like, say, um, uh, a put, if you will. I see the response code and I actually see my values here. So these are directly from um, uh, my Azure subscription. And uh, kind of the other example here is uh, AZ, which is Azure CLI. It's a command line tool. And one of the key things that we have here, and I'll just do a VM create um, and show the virtual machines um, documentation. This is editable. So this has a number of examples here. All of these examples are actually embedded in the product themselves. So let's click Edit, and we'll see what it actually does is, let's just make sure we are at a higher size here. It's embedded directly within the help.py. So it lets me know, you know, this specific command has these specific examples. I can click Edit, I can make a change, and it's not just changing the docs, it's changing and adding that example into the product. So the next build of the product has that code sample. And what we talked about in the session was, if you're doing this with Windows PowerShell, because all of our Windows PowerShell um, uh, examples, you're actually going to change and your code sample will ship in the next version of Windows, right? So that one source of truth where you helped uh, uh, improve the docs, but it actually is going to ship, not, you're not just improving you know, the docs page, you're actually improving uh, the, the product itself. So it's true, write, write once, run everywhere, <laughs> for, for documentation. Yes, yeah, the, the one source yeah. of truth, which is one of the hardest parts that we had, which yeah. was there were, there were too many sources of truth. So, uh, cool. Fantastic. Uh, what else would you like to see? Um, well, one thing that really sort of stands out for me was um, your kind of use of the Jamstack and actually um, yes. doing um, uh, building flat documents. And one thing that... Um, I thought about that is if you're starting to build flat documents and hosting flat documents, surely that means there's less functionality. But what you're clearly showing is through these microservices, you're putting in much more functionality. One thing that really jumped out at me sure. was you could just tag 
a piece of text and then turn it into a sample that could run just with the in the markdown. Yes, yes, absolutely. So if we actually, um, uh, let's go show kind of an example here. Um, and any of these examples, I'm just going to show the container instances one, which is the one I was showing earlier. Um, I can walk up and as a content author, we're, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to open up the try it to start this up. And I'm also going to open up another tab here. Give this a second to finish starting up. Ooh, yeah, connect up, build my cloud shell, please. Ooh. My browser is requesting cloud shell. Um, so whenever this finishes, and actually maybe I'll just do a quick step in tab here while this is going. What we're going to show is how do you make that try it example? You as an author don't need to do anything uh, very special. Click edit. And if you notice, all of these pages have edit. We have over, uh, I think it was 7,000 at last count, uh, Microsoft employees and community members contributing to our docs. So this is what a markdown file looks like. There's you know, front matter, which is key value pairs to do title, description, some of the things that you would normally put in HTML head tag. Um, you get a live preview uh, as well um, directly in GitHub. So there's no kind of magical tools here. And you don't need to be a Microsoft employee to click that edit button, do you? Absolutely not. Anybody can change uh, uh, our docs. And then here, if we just kind of zoom in, we see uh, there's three back ticks, and we say what language it's going to be. And if we say Azure CLI interactive, then that's going to open up automatically in the interactive experience, which, since we've been talking, has actually finished loading. So now I can actually go ahead and uh, run things directly in my container. So those three back ticks are the standard back ticks you do for any kind of code sample you're putting in Markdown. Absolutely any, any right. Doc you'd write. So you, all you've done is added a, a keyword on the end of that, and it turns it into this magic, I can run this on Azure. Yes, absolutely. So uh, the way a bunch of these things are designed is we're using um, a tool that basically builds once. So it's it's at build time. We start uh, build, take that markdown file, convert it into a model, and a model just like we would use in say ASP.NET MVC or any sort of server side language. You know, it's got uh, you know model title, which would be you know those those attributes or elements that we saw. Um, up here, model.description, and then the actual content, which is converted from Markdown into HTML. And for those kind of special things within there, like the triple backtick, we do uh, special things. And by special things, I mean uh, we convert that into that triad experience, which then calls Azure Cloud's shell, integrates uh, a terminal directly into our code. But all that's done one time. So if you think about how ASP.NET or Java or any of the server-side languages work, Every single request is doing that same thing. With the Jamstack, anything, it's only running at build time, and it's spitting out HTML fragments, right? And then uh, we are hosting those HTML fragments. And the only thing that's dynamic is, is loaded via JavaScript and, say, APIs that call microservices. So it all sounds like good stuff. Get any resources or references to find out more about any of this stuff? What a great question. And luckily, I have an entire slide just on that. So uh, I just published on my slides. Uh, to github.com, the Dan Fernandez, so if you want the soft copy of this. But a couple things to keep out here. The tools we use for .NET reference, those are using MDoc, which is a tool from Xamarin. Doctainers is a tool that runs and does all the build process for those APIs in whatever language uh, by Den um, uh, uh in containers. A um, couple other things, the syntax highlighter. Uh, GitHub Issues is another really big one by Jeremy Daniel on the team, uh, and that's using utterances. And what that allows you to do is use GitHub issues as kind of a commenting system for anything. We use it inside of our docs, but we, you can also use it for, say, your blog or any sort of uh, uh, project that you have. Um, and there's a number of things here, especially for the folks who are a little hesitant on Markdown or um, uh, Git or GitHub, and are like, hey, my team will never understand how to do a pull request or merge this stuff. It's all taken care of you by a number of these different tools. One of them is Netlify CMS, which I did a demo of, and has the WYSIWYG experience uh, and an editor that you just drag and drop on a Kanban board. And when you drag and drop, it's actually changing the pull request branch and merging it into master. So all the things, you get to keep the power of GitHub without having to you know, teach people how to use a, a command line. 
Um, uh, and again, all the static site generators, pick whichever language you like. Uh, static gen is the one site that lists them all and, and kind of the popularity contest of it. But it really is powerful tools and uh, hopefully everybody's gonna at least give Jamstack a try. Awesome, thank you. I'm gonna finish by saying go to the new site, docs.microsoft.com. It's where it all is. It's one place for everything. Yes, yeah, one site to rule them all. Yeah. So thanks for talking to us. Um, I've been Brendan and you've been watching uh, SSW TV at NDC 2019.